Lesson 26, I will represent the multiplication of n times a over b as n times a over b. So lesson 36 is a continuation of what we did in lesson 35. So if you remember, n represents any whole number. So if I have n times, let me get my pen. So if I have n, and let's just say n equals 5, times a over b represents a fraction, I'm saying that is the same thing as 5 times 2 over 3, which is pretty much what we learned yesterday. We learned that whenever you have 2 thirds 5 times, you end up with 10 thirds. So because this is basically what we did yesterday, but we're going to spend a little bit more time practicing to strengthen your understanding, we're not going to use our math journals today. We're going to go right straight to our problem set. All right, so in your problem set, I want you to go ahead and get it out and write your name. You're going to notice we're going to begin with a little bit of illustration or some models. So for number one, it says to draw a tape diagram to represent. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a tape diagram. You should be getting really good at drawing tape diagrams after all this work with fractions. All right, so I've got one, two, three, three, four. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to divide this into four parts because I have four numbers or four fractions, and I'm going to label each of these three-fourths. So I've got three-fourths, 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 and three-fourths. Okay. Below this it says, write a multiplication expression equal to three-fourths, 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 three-fourths. So an expression is whenever you just write a math fact, but you don't necessarily solve it. So three-fourths plus three-fourths plus three-fourths plus three-fourths. I've got three-fourths four times. So this is the same thing as four times three-fourths. So notice I don't have an equal sign, I don't have an answer, and that's because this is an expression. I'm just showing how do you represent this same math problem without using multiplication. So this is an expression. All right, so let's try this again. I bet you could probably do this one all by yourself. So we're going to represent 7 twelfths plus 7 twelfths plus 7 twelfths. So let's go ahead and divide our tape diagram into three parts like this. And then we have 7 twelfths, 7 twelfths, and 7 twelfths. So how do you think you would write this repeated addition sentence as a multiplication expression? Take a look at what we did here. What would we do? I've got 7 twelfths how many times? I've got it three times. So that's the same thing as 3 times 7 twelfths. Okay, let's take a look at now we're going to rewrite each repeated addition problem as a multiplication problem and solve. So see the difference here. This is not an expression. We are going to solve it. Express the result as a mixed number. The first one has been started for you. So you can see they started with repeated addition just like we did in part one and two. And then they wrote it as an expression with four times seven, seven fifths because we have seven fifths four times. So here's where we get that a or n times a over b. So notice nothing happens to our denominator. So we're basically just multiplying the whole number times the numerator. So it can be written like this, 4 times 7 over 5, which will give us 28 fifths. Now we're not finished because the directions say express the result as a mixed number. So if you remember how we do that, I'm going to think to myself, how many fives are in 28? So if I count it by fives, I could get all the way to 25 without going over 28. So if I said 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, the next one will be 30. So I'm going to stop at 25. I've got 25 fifths, and then I have to think about what's left over. Well, that would be 3 fifths, because remember, these two together have to equal 28 fifths. So now, 25 fifths has how many 5 fifths in it? Well, it has 5, because 5 times 5 is 25. So I've got 5 and three-fifths. Okay, let's try another one. So I've got nine-tenths plus nine-tenths plus nine-tenths. That's the same thing as three times nine-tenths. So because tenths is my unit, nothing's going to happen to that. So I'm just going to say three times nine. And notice I'm getting really small. I'm trying to not bump into this. Three times nine over ten. Well, three times nine equals 27. So now I've got 27 tenths. So let's use a number bond so that we don't leave this as an improper fraction. So if I count it by tens, 10, 20, 
I can't go any further without going over. So I've got 20 tenths and 7 tenths. Well, 20 tenths has 10 tenths two times. So this would be 2 and 7 tenths. Okay, let's try C. So I've got 11, 11, 11, 11, 11. That's 5 times 11 twelfths, which is the same thing as 5 times 11 over 12. So 5 times 11 would be 55 over 12. And I'm not as good with my 12 facts, but I know some of the basics. Like I know that 12, when I count by 12, that's a 12, 24, 36, 48, and then it would be 60. So 48 twelfths is the highest I can go. And then that's going to leave 7 twelfths because 48 plus 7 is 55. So 48 twelfths is 4 twelfths and 7 twelfths left over. So this is my mixed number. At this point, I feel like converting from this improper fraction to a mixed number is going to be way trickier than the actual um, objective that we're trying to learn here, which is multiplying a fraction times a whole number. All right, now for number four, it says solve using any method, express your answers as whole or mixed numbers. So I'm taking a look here, and I'm thinking the method that we have been using has been pretty simple, so I'm gonna stick with that. I've got eight times two over three, which equals 16 thirds. So that's an improper fraction. So if I count it by threes, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 15 thirds is the highest I can get without going over. And then I have one more third because together this has to equal 16. So if I counted how many three thirds are in 15 thirds, that would be five because five times three is 15. So I've got five and one third. All right, so let's try this one. We're gonna do one more together and then I'm gonna have you try a couple of them by yourself. The numbers are getting a little bit bigger, but I think you can do it. All right, so for B, we've got 12 times three over four. 12 times three is 36 and then I have fourths. So on this one, I don't have to make a number bond. And the reason why I don't is because I know that nine times four is 36. So 36 fourths is the same thing as nine. Okay. Okay, so I want you to try to do C and D all by yourself. I want you to do as much of each problem as you can. If you can only get to right here where you get to this improper fraction and you have trouble converting from an improper fraction to a mixed number, you can always come back and I'll walk you through that. But I want you to try to do as much of it as you can. So pause the video now and do as much of C and D as you can all by yourself. Okay, hopefully you paused the video and did as I asked. You could at least get this problem set up. So you should have known that you could do 50 times 4 over 5. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, I can't do 50 times 4. Well, of course you can. 5 times 4 is 20. Okay, this is 5 tens times 4, which is 20 tens. 20 tens is 200. So now you've got 200 over 5. So you might be thinking, well, I can't divide 200 by 5. Of course you can. You can think to yourself, okay, first of all, how many 5s are in 20? That would be four, right? And then you add a zero. So how many fives are in 20, or excuse me, in 200? 40. Because this is 200 divided by five, which is 20 divided by five, which is four. And then you add your zero because 40 times five is 200. Okay. Like I said, this is the most difficult part of this whole process. This part's not too hard at all. All right, so let's look at D. Again, we've got some big numbers. So I've got 26 times 7 over 8. Okay, I could do 25 times 7 in my head pretty easily because I could think of quarters. But I think probably the most efficient way to do this is probably just to write it out and say 6 times 7 is 42. This is standard algorithm. 
2 times 7 is 14 plus 4, which is 18. So that's going to give you 182 over 8. So now if I want to know how many 8s are in 182, I'm going to have to divide. Okay, So I'm going to take 182 divided by 8. So I'm thinking, hmm, 18 divided by 8 would be 2. 2 times 8 is 16, which is going to give me 2. And then bring down my 2. How many 8s are in 22? 2. And 2 times 8 is 16. So I've got a remainder of 6. So here's what I need to know right here. I need to know that I've got 22 eighths. Okay? So that would be, instead of trying to do this as an improper fraction like I have over here, what I would do is I would say, okay, my whole number is going to be 22, and then I've got 6 left over, so that's going to be 22 and 6 eighths. Okay, let's take a look at the back page. So Morgan poured 9 tenths liter of punch into each of six bottles. How many liters of punch did she pour in all? So once we read, now we have to draw. So we're going to make this into a tape diagram. I've got six bottles, so I'm going to divide this tape diagram into six parts. And I'm going to label each part 9 tenths because that's how much punch she poured into each bottle. So I've got 9 tenths six times. So think to yourself, where is the part that I'm trying to find out? Where's the question mark? Well, I'm looking for how many in all. So this is going to be what I'm trying to figure out, my total. So I could say 9 tenths plus 9 tenths six times, or I could say 6 times 9 tenths, which equals 54 tenths. And since we've been changing these mixed num improper fractions to mixed numbers, let's go ahead and do that. So I've got 54 tenths. If I count it by tens, I would get to 50. And then I would have 4 tenths left over. So 50 tenths would be equal to 5, because 5 times 10 is 50. And then I have 4 tenths. So how many liters of punch did she pour in all? She poured 5 and 4 tenths liters of punch. All right, let's take a look at number six. So a recipe calls for three-fourths cup rice. How many of cups of rice are needed to make the recipe 14 times? So I'm not going to draw 14 boxes in this tape diagram, but here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put three-fourths, and then I'm going to put times 14 to show that that would be 14 times. Now, again, it wants to know how many total. So this is what I'm trying to figure out. If I wanted to make this recipe 14 times, I would have 3 fourths times 14. So I would have 14 times 3 over 4. So if I wanted to figure out 14 times 3, I would solve and that would give me 42. So now I've got 42 fourths. So to change that from an improper fraction, if I counted by 4s, I would get to 40 before I started going over. So I've got 40 fourths and 2 fourths left over. So 40 fourths would be the same thing as 10, and then I would have my 2 fourths. So how many cups of rice are needed? So you would say there are 10 and 2 fourths cups of rice needed. All right, let's take a look at seven. A butcher prepared 120 sausages using three eighths pound of meat for each. How many pounds did he use in all? So again, I'm not going to draw 120 three eighths, but I am gonna go ahead and draw this tape diagram just because I think it's important to illustrate that you would have three eighths 100 times, okay? And I'm trying to figure out, again, the total. Okay, so I would have 100 times 3 eighths, which would be the same thing as 100 times 3 over 8, which is 300 eighths. 
So again, this is the trickiest part here, going from this improper fraction to a mixed number. So when I've got a number like 300, I'm going to have to use division because I can't do this in my head. So if I've got 300 divided by 8, so 30 divided by 8 would be 3. When I subtract, that would give me 24. 30 minus 24 is 6. I bring down my 1s, I have 60. So 60 divided by 8 would be 7, and 7 times 8 is 56. That's going to leave me with a remainder of 4. So that means I've got 37 and 4 over 8. Whenever you have a remainder, you can make a fraction out of it by putting your remainder over your divisor. So this would be 37 and 4 eighths. So now I just have to answer this in a sentence. He used... 37 and 4 eighths pounds of meat. Okay, so we're finished with our problem set today. The most difficult part of our problem set today was not the concept of multiplying a whole number times a fraction. The trickiest part was right here understanding how to go from this improper fraction to a mixed number. So don't get hung up on this part right here. Just remember this is just basic division.